Okay, so what I'm going to quickly do to begin with is I'm going to just label my parameters. So this is going to start with one and item is going to be nine. So we're talking about, when we talk about index one, we're talking about this to begin with. So if my list index, which is the number three, is bigger than zero, yes it is. If my list index is greater than or equal to item, item is nine, we're, we've got the number three. It's not bigger than or equal to, so this I don't run. I don't do the if statement. Instead, what we do is we call x index plus one. So index plus one would be two. We add one to the index. Item will still be nine. I don't need to write nine in again. It's just the same, but whatever. Okay, now, what we're going to do is go back. <coughs> My list index is greater than zero. Yes, it is. It's for number two. If my list index is greater than or equal to item, it's not. I've got the number two, item is the number nine. Therefore, I just go, go skip to line eight, and we're on three. We're now dealing with the number eight. If my list index is greater than or equal to item, no, it's not. Eight is not bigger than or equal to nine. So we call x again. So we've got now the number four. We run it again. So we're sending these parameters into here. So index is now four. Item is still number nine. If my list index, which is nine, is greater than, no it's not, but it's equal to nine, then we're gonna do this part. Interesting, so what is it that we're going to do? Well, we're going to actually go to minus index plus one. So plus one is 13, because currently we're in four, so we plus one, and we're gonna put it into my list index, which is eight. So it's gonna be, sorry, like it's nine. So we're gonna move this into here. So now four, index four will contain the number 13. Very nice. We then call it again. So this time, index five. The item is still the same. We never change the item in any of this code. So it's always gonna be the same. So, let's have a look at what's in five. In five, it's going to be still 13 because all we've done is copied 13 here. So it's still 13. 13 is greater than or equal to item. So what do we do? We go to 13, so we're in five, and we go to next door, and we put next door into here. So now this is 16. So five is now 16. I want you to, I'm gonna pause the video, I want you to see if you can do the rest. I'm then gonna do the final bit. Okay, so I'm hoping you've then realized, okay, I've lost my mouse, there we go. Number six, we're dealing with 16. Is it bigger than or equal to nine? Yes, it is. So we simply put into position 16, 27, the next door neighbor, because it's plus one. Why is it plus one? because of this my list index plus one. It takes the current index position and then it looks at this plus one says, I want to take the one next door to it and store it into my index. Now, the rest of this is gonna be quite simple. So we've got 27, it is greater than or equal to, so it's greater than item, item being nine, 27 is much bigger. So what do we have to do? We go to 27, we go to its next door neighbor and put that next door neighbor into here. So now we've got a zero. Okay, are we done here? Well, no, we're not. We can do it again for eight. 
but eight contains the value zero. So when we compare it to here, this ain't going to run. So it's going to be nothing switched around in our array. So what has actually happened? Well, basically, what's happened is it's taken the item which we've inputted, which is nine. So imagine the system saying enter in a number between one and 30, and you enter in the number nine. And it's in our array. It will then get rid of that number nine. It will get rid of the item which someone types in. In this case, it's number nine. It removes it from the array. That's what we've just done, all of that process. I'm hoping that is a lot more clear for you guys.